Good morning, family of fast. Matt Mossman, the Chief Endurance Officer over at Endurelite. Pop quiz time! What's the fastest legal way to increase your VO2 max? Is it A, EPO, B, living at altitude, C, HIT training, or D, steady state cardio? If you answered C, you win because HIT training is the fastest way to increase VO2 max. But Actually, this is kind of a trick question and a little bit of a deceiving answer, and we'll get into that part of this video here in a second. But first, let's briefly describe what uh, HIT and VO2 are and their relationship and why HIT increases VO2 max pretty rapidly. So HIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training, and this has been a really, really hot fitness trend over the last, I don't know, three or four years. But basically, HIT training involves short, super maximal efforts with short recovery time. So busting your balls for like 30 to 100 seconds at 100% above effort or 90 up to 110% of maximal effort, if that's even possible, recovering and repeating you know, anywhere from five to 20 times. So HIT, you know, people like it a lot because it is effective, it's enjoyable. Some people like it better than long, slow cardio. And like I said, it's very effective at increasing VO2 max rapidly. Now, VO2 max from other videos you know is basically how efficiently your body can use oxygen during endurance exercise. And it's based on a lot of factors like mitochondrial density, cap density, how much blood um, your heart can pump. And VO2 max is really developed when you go beyond 90% of maximal heart rate and above. So it makes a lot of sense that HIIT training increases VO2 max pretty rapidly. But as I said in the beginning of the video, this is a little bit of a deceiving question. Instead of saying, you know, what's the fastest way to increase VO2 max as an endurance athlete, we should look at more what is the best way to increase VO2 max because HIT definitely has its downfalls and we'll cover that in a second. So the best way to increase VO2 max is to use all endurance training modalities. This includes long steady miles, interval training, lactate threshold training, repetition training, and then also the use of HIT, which there's sometimes a little bit of confusion about, you know, HIT and interval training. So the main difference the way I see it is HIT again is short efforts, super maximal efforts, short recovery, where interval training is a little bit longer efforts, say two to three minutes at about 90 to 95% of maximal heart rate with one to one work rest ratio. So let's just briefly describe each of these real quick and why it's important for overall or the best VO2 max development. So the long, slow, steady miles develops your aerobic capabilities. It develops mitochondrial density, capillary density. It gets your muscles used to the demands you're going to place on it, especially during longer races. And to boot, I would always include the long, slow miles before I would incorporate any kind of HIIT training, just so you have a base to go off of and you don't hurt yourself or get overtrained right out of the gate if you're doing HIIT training exclusively. Then we go on to lactate threshold, which is done at about, eh, depending on the person, 80 to 80%, 88% of VO2 max. And like the name implies, this helps you develop your lactate threshold or the point where lactate to shows, shows up in your blood that signals the switch to anaerobic glycolysis. Now, if you can develop this out, you can operate at a higher intensity without fatiguing as quickly. Then you go on to repetition type training, which develops basically efficiency, whether you're running, biking, OCRing, or, or whatever. And then you get to the HIIT training again. So really, it's all about a combination of all of those things put together that is the best way to develop VO2 max. So let me paint a little picture for you. Let's just take the example of a half marathon, but this can be applied again to, to longer cycling races or longer OCR races and um, um, things of that nature. So 
Half marathon, if you were only doing HIT training by itself, you know, there's those first couple miles, you might be, feel pretty good, but when you start getting up into the, the higher miles, you're gonna run out of gas, you're gonna burn out, and I can almost guarantee you, you know, going head to head with a person that just has done long, slow miles to prep, to prep for this half marathon is gonna blow your doors off because, I mean, VO2 max, like I said, is only one part of the equation and HIIT training is so specific that yeah, it does increase your VO2 max, but it doesn't address all those other things I just talked about as far as like oxidative capabilities, lactate threshold, and all those things. So main take home point is yeah, absolutely HIIT is one of the fastest ways to increase VO2 max, but it's not necessarily the best way in the overall training scheme of an endurance athlete when it comes to racing really well. So that is all I have for today, my endurance friends. If you have a buddy that's just absolutely sold on HIIT training and think it's just the, the, the creme de la creme of endurance and training, that's all he needs, please share this video with them and then tell him he's wrong or she's wrong. If you want other videos like this on endurance training, nutrition, supplementation, and other random musings, subscribe to the Endure Elite YouTube channel or head on over to the Endure Elite blog at www www.endurelite.com. Get social with us on Facebook and Instagram. And until next time, family of fast, stay fueled, stay focused, stay fast, and stay informed.